I decided to do this guide to help you have a fantastic time while doing the Cape Wrath Trail. I've done this trail twice in two consecutive months, so I hope my advice is helpful. If you want more information about this trail, I have a CWT video and I also have a Scottish National Trail video, the one that is playing here. So that should give you a better idea of what to expect. In this video, I talk about the alternates I took, but as you know, the CWT is a long hike and it has many different alternates. I mostly mention them, but I just speak about the things I did and the things I saw, because I don't like to speak about things I don't know, actually. If we go to walkhighlands.co.uk and then we just get to walks, long distance walks, left click on it, then we have here the Cape Wrath Trail, left click, and this takes us to the Cape Wrath Trail, obviously, webpage with a description. This is a pretty good website. It has a lot of resources. To begin with, you have just a initial sort of description. Then you have all the stages here. And as you can see, you can read more information and whatnot. So you have a description of every stage. It tells you about the terrain. I'm not too sure about if you need this, but whatever. So to me, the terrain and sometimes the description was very useful. Here at the bottom, you have a description of the stage. So it's very thorough and you have pictures and you can use this to have an idea of what you're going to encounter. Once we're here, what is important to know, these are the files you want to download if you want to use a GPS or if you want to load these onto your phone to use them with OS maps, for example. If you want to download the file, as I was saying, you just click here. You agree to this. And there you go, you download your file. You have to do that for every single file. I made a video as to how to do this and I'll put the link in the description and hopefully somewhere on the screen as well. I can't make up my, my mind as to which of these two is better. Probably I would recommend this one. I did this in the Scottish National Trail. I loved it. I really, really enjoyed doing this thing. I didn't start for Williams, but I did for sure this Mandalay to Pulari and all this. Because of the mountain passes you go through here, I would take this route, but this is very special, very awesome as well. You're going to arrive here somewhere and you will see this. This is like a bar. I remember my wife and I had a coffee there or something and it was putting down big time. And then I think on the right here is where you catch the ferry to the other side. So then it takes you here. All this is pretty straightforward and easy. I, I don't remember if it was 8K, super easy. Just road walk, so you know that now. Make sure when you get somewhere over here, you pay attention a little bit before so that you don't just carry on on the road because it would make for a really bad start. You get to the turn here, you pick up this, it's like a forest track, it's excellent and it lasts, if memory serves, pretty much all the way up to here. Somewhere over here, I don't remember, there was a Bothy, but apparently it's a private one, so you're not supposed to go there unless you ask for permission, I guess. Somewhere over here, there was a, like a flood. Well, it was a flood, not just like it. And so depending on the time of the year you go and whatnot, you're going to find different conditions. Just bear that in mind. You know you have to go up the mountain and you will see the path from over here, even somewhere over here. You already see the path up the mountain if you pay close attention. I recall all this being just straightforward. It was steep, as you can see here in the map. See the contour lines are very close to each other. So it was steep, but no big deal. It's um, very straightforward all the way up. All this part of the trail was difficult terrain because it was a path all the time, but you have like stones and rocks, and there was a lot of puddles and bogs. And since my wife and I did it in August, there were midges, uh, when we were getting to the end and it was pretty annoying. Depending on the time of the year, it can be your first river crossing there. Over here, there's nice views. This is a nice area. When you get here, 
Don't just keep walking, you need to turn right, but there is a signpost, so it says Glenfinnan, so. We went to a pub somewhere over here, or a hotel or something, we had lunch there, it's recommendable, we had a good lunch, and the place looked very nice, and we were like dirty with mud and whatnot, and we were treated very well. This takes 35 kilometers, so, if I was you, I would cut it into half and I would do first day sort of half the way and come somewhere over here before you go up the hill because you won't have camping opportunities in most of this. And once you get here, what's the point? Then you would just complete the stage. So I would just cut it to half and take it easy for the first day and just grow into the hike because you're going to have time to struggle, trust me. So if you have a good first day and you let your body adapt, you're setting up for a good uh, hike. Whereas if you push yourself too much it's because you want to complete this in one go, then you might have a difficult second day and then the whole thing starts being difficult already. And I don't think the Kebrath Trail is a trail you should have against you from day one. This is not a good place to camp. So on the first day, I recommend it to camp before or after. Once you pass the viaduct, you have some camping opportunities. So here you kind of go in, don't remember very well, I think it was a bit up the hill, but just a bit. But all over this forest, I remember I could have camped on the side. So just bear that in mind, you'll find a place somewhere here to camp. So if you wanna stretch and do like 40K on the first day, 43, 42, whatever it is, you can, you can find a camping spot from the viaduct onwards. This is all easy road. I don't know if you get to see it. Yeah, so like this. And by the way, as you can see there's water all over the place on this trail. So my advice is do not carry any water. Like whenever you're thirsty, just refill and you can just plan. Like you come up here, so you get to go for the next two hours at least. And as you can see, you fall in a freaking river, but just do as you wish. When you get in up here, remember you gotta turn right. So don't just keep going and pay attention to your navigation. So actually what I said about this is this, because <laughs> you have to turn right, but as you can see the track keeps going. So you, you will have to, um, you will get to a point where you have to go left or right. Remember you're going right. And I think you can see the both is somewhere over here, so you should aim at it. So you are in the in the right side. Um, <clears throat> so just keep going up, easy peasy. Now what I said about this is because my wife and I camp over here, so that's a good camping spot. This is where things become more complicated because you, you have a path. You can see it here. This is the the green dots here. And at some point it ends, like every single day of your life in the Kebrath Trail. At some point there is a path that always ends. Here you're going to go um, over the first mountain pass of the trail. And depending on your level of experience, well, it's going to be a bit overwhelming because at some point there is no path. Basically, you will struggle. Shall I go left? Shall I go right? And yes, we arrived here with a Jesus, where do we go? Well, let me tell you something. It's very straightforward. I told my wife, listen, we gotta go over the mountain. So let's just go over the freaking mountain. I've seen very different rivers in Scotland, trust me. Difficult river crossings and outright dangerous river crossings. Look at the freaking damn river. Depending on the time of the year, the damn river crossing here may be quite difficult. For us, it was uh, super easy. So just bear that in mind. Once you go over the thing and you start going down, going down here, it was pretty steep for a few meters. And then it got just going down okay. All the section over here, I think, for the most part is pathless. So just, again, don't, don't worry too much. When you get here and you just go down there, you know you gotta go down here. So it doesn't matter if you're on the left in this path or on the right, whatever. You have to go here, so as long as you get in there, just try to go as straight as possible because it's going to be the fastest. And at some point there was a very grown vegetation there and just have to go through. 
this bit oh my god this was just like super boggy and muddy very slow annoying terrain it's not difficult it's just that it was very boggy and you know it just, just start getting dirty and it's annoying in that regard very slow going over here once you make it here there is a path take you into the forest or whatever you call this and then you just pick up here and here you pick up the route so I remember there was a bridge here as well just cross here you need to walk to the left and then I found the path and it was easy peasy to get inside and pick up this track it was all the way super easy just a forest track so it was awesome all easy peasy and then at some point you get to the bothy here it is this is the bothy that's the end of this stage that is a 19k so easy peasy happy days uh, yeah, that's your bothy now just to say you're gonna be in this in this uh, forest track so the bothy is here it's not straightforward it wasn't for us either we missed the path or we didn't see it or whatever we ended up just going down the hill whichever way we could and we get to the, we got to the bothy we had our coffee break in the bothy so no big deal there this is stage 3 25 kilometers a quill to Barristel Bay. I remember my wife telling me while we were there that these two stages were difficult and hard and that's true. Look, extremely rough boggy footpath and pathless terrain. This is an accurate description for the most part. I remember the terrain was freaking me out for the first time. From the Bothy, you go over here and that's um, I think that was easy peasy, straightforward, but um, at some point, so there is, I think that there's still this uh, path track here that's marked. Um, don't expect this to be super easy because even though it was August when we were there, the, um, the terrain was really muddy, like very slippery and muddy. We kept going this way because we come somewhere over here. So, um, yeah, so we just kept going, and now, once you get over there, it, it's still, it's gonna be muddy and whatnot, but it's still much better than when you, what you're gonna find all over here. So, this is, um, again, sort of difficult terrain. You have all these rocks on the, on the ground, and I remember telling my wife, I'm like, pretty much from stone to stone, to avoid all the bogies, because you never know how deep they are. And we spotted some deer over here, and it's, it's beautiful. I like this section, I, I found it pretty, especially here by this uh, loja, whatever you pronounce that. It was beautiful. So forget about camping all over here, there's no nowhere to put your tent. And you have to cross this river. For us, it was super easy, straightforward. For you, maybe a, like a fort, different, more difficult thing. I remember that was like a what seemed to be that you could just go straight instead of kind of climbing up the mountain. We decided to stick to the path. I could see from the top of the mountain that it was for sure the right decision to make. So stick to the side, to the right and to the side of the mountain. And even if you have to go up, just go up. You, you better do that. And I think that's here. You have to climb here a bit. Now you get over here again. It's all like the description says, right? Like it's, it's like rough and and boggy and whatnot and you get to the bothy i remember this to be my favorite part of the trail uh, by the bothy all this bay or whatever there is it was very beautiful with the with all this seaweed and marine stuff when the tide is low um you can go around as you have to wait i think for the tide to be low and then you get to see all the seaweed and just very special. I found it very special. The bothy itself is very small and nothing special. It's just a small room. I think it will easily accommodate four people. From here onwards is when the, I think the real Kebra Trail starts, where the worst terrain you can encounter is because it was 
everything incredibly boggy. Most of it, it was like sort of ankle deep boggy, just very difficult terrain. Somewhere over here, I found some um, like cats on the earth that I have a video where I could put my trekking pole all the way down and that is 125, 30 centimeters down. So that, that makes it very easy for you to break your leg. See, this is very dense vegetation and it's, it's very difficult to spot when there's gonna be a hole like that. We had these Harvey maps and I remember the maps were also taking you to this side and then back. I did not follow the Harvey maps and I decided to just stick to this side and kept going. Of course, there's no path or anything. You just find your way, but it's pretty straightforward. And then we just cross the river, whatever place we could. But that was a track. Yeah, so we pick it up and kept going. And then all this, at some point, all this became like a nightmare again. It's been ankle deep or more, ultra boggy all the time. Super boggy. So we had a very rainy day, all day raining non-stop. At some point you have to climb up and it's like a real scramble up with not a, like a nasty fall down to the river and the, the river bank. When it comes to camping spots, very difficult. I saw someone camping by the Bothy and on this area by the Bothy, you get to a place where you can camp and it's before you go up the hill to, to do another mountain pass. The problem is that it's still gonna be very wet terrain, but you could do it if you have to. Probably the camping spot was here. What was difficult was to find this way. My advice is whatever the GPS or phone is telling you, just go straight and take it. Like swallow the pill and say, okay, what, what is the direction? Up there, go and take it. There was no path at all. And you couldn't even tell that someone had crossed through the vegetation or whatnot. When we arrived here, we were following the Harvey maps, so we just continue all the way up to here. They recommend you to go north, as you can see over here, the river goes 90 degrees to the right. So that should be your landmark. I was here and we had watched a YouTube video where there was this person saying that you had to go in between of two waterfalls. I think the guide says something about some rocks, you turn left, well, nothing helped, to be honest. The problem is, when we were here and look up and it was crystal clear we had to go north but boy this was so rough and there was literally no indication as to where to go nowadays because i have more experience in scotland i would just take off north and i don't care if the map and the gps says i'm going north here I just take it and you usually end up finding a path as it's supposed to be. When we were here, it was our second hike in Scotland and we didn't have any major experience. So what we did is out of desperation because the midges were eating us, my wife took off and she started climbing and I direct her from the bottom. We climb up and then eventually we found a little path. So probably it was somewhere over here wherever I thought there was a, a better clearance. And that little tiny path took us all the way up to Barry's tail. And then you just keep going and it gets um, steep and then you just climb up and up and up. And then I remember it became easy just going down the hill. It's been a super long day and it still is. And we still have a, a way to go. Oh my God. But she nailed it, she crushed it. Thank you. Oh my God. I'm super proud of her. You must look like shit. Look at that. No, you look good. To make it to Barristale, we camp here. We could have camp before Barristale because there's some sign, please don't do not come, something like that. If you want to avoid that, then camp a bit earlier, somewhere over here. And otherwise just keep going and I don't know, donate whatever, five pounds, I don't remember where it was. And anyway, the thing was closed, but we could camp outside. Now, all this is easy PC, just a track. Actually, I think the track starts somewhere, um, well, over here, apparently, following the map. This is Barstale Bay to Morvik. This is going to be 33 kilometers, and I remember that, that was a, 
that was difficult. I mean, it was a hard day. The terrain, this always helps a lot. Always check the root profile because that's going to tell you how high you're going to go. So the root profile at the bottom of the page is very useful. As you can see, this is going to be a difficult day today. Sort of, you, you will have to climb up to almost 800 meters and then all the way down. This part by the log is very beautiful. So you are in Barisdale here. All this is straightforward and nice and easy. Once you get here, remember, don't just keep going. You won't go too far, as you can see. The road ends here. So that's a nice road, just walk. Now, when you get into this, the nice easy path ends. All easy peasy up to somewhere over here, and then your, your the hell day is gonna start. This terrain becomes, the path becomes narrower and narrower. The vegetation, at least at the time we went, becomes thicker and, and taller and taller. And the, the start to be rocks all over the place. And it, it, I remember it was a difficult terrain. I mean, at the end of the day, you just need to walk and put one foot in front of the other. But I remember it was very tough going, very slow going and, and just tough. And at some point, I think over here, that was a lot of vegetation. It felt like you were, I don't know, in Vietnam in the jungle. It was very nice. I really enjoyed it anyway. All of it, especially by the side, by the bank, it was very pretty, beautiful colors. And we had a very nice and sunny day and it made everything super pretty. So when you go up here, it's steep. And then you go down and over here is very pretty as well, all this. And at some point you get to a road pretty much at the end. And then you just pick up your road and just walk nice and easy. And hopefully this will be open for you. And you just keep going. Keep in mind you will have to turn and just keep going. It's pretty straightforward because you can see the other side. And so you know you're walking, you know you get to get to this place. Let's get here. They offer some camping here, apparently, if memory serves. And now you get to a completely different um, landscape here. This is like a nice forest and it's pretty and all, but it starts being steep and then it becomes very steep, like really steep. And then once you're done and you are, I remember we had a snack here, I think, at the top. No matter what, so you keep going for as long as the Terminator pace is engaged. I remember at some point you start getting into a, like a place that makes you feel you're in the middle of nowhere with this mountain. And you just go over there and you, you're still following a path, but at some point there's no longer a path. And it was all the way I remember was up the hill. You just gonna look up and you will understand that you need to go up and you will have to find what seemed to you the easiest path to go over the mountain. Then I remember there's this log, mini log, and that hopefully should help you determine the path you need to take. At some point it becomes very obvious, but I remember initially we took off a bit of a, it was just a few, like maybe 20 meters, but we had to backtrack, try to be objective, follow your GPS. It doesn't matter what you think, the GPS knows better. And then you get to see the path on the side of the mountain. Also, I remember, I think it was all this part over here, this side. It was a path, so to call it, that were massive big rocks. Like I'm talking about like one and a half tall rocks. And you were like a mountain god walking from rock to rock. Then I remember here again, I think the path was kind of straightforward and it was a bit weird to turn left. And then over here, I remember which is all pathless, all this closer to the river, all this section, especially all the way up to here, it was horrible. And yeah, we were massively happy when we got to this track, that was actually a track. And then just get over here and there's a campsite somewhere and you can camp before, I think, memory serves, there were some places you could camp before getting to the campsite. Here on the right, or somewhere there was a gas station that maybe if it's open you can resupply. We were staying for my birthday. We were staying at this lodge. From here is all a road. Something to note. There's very awesome, nice people at this uh, shop that I think is over here. Kintel, Kintel Crafts shop. 
very nice people there very very nice people you need to find your resupply points so this is one of them you're not gonna find this uh, trail food but if you need to resupply I can guarantee you they have a lot of stuff in that small shop here also there is a bed and breakfast I uh, don't remember the name but the woman that owns the place is called Celia she's the most wonderful person ever read your description because it says uh, as you can see false oklahoma is on a precarious exposed path with minor scrambling this is a very accurate description i have a video where i show this minor scrambling place and also i tell you what to do if you're afraid so check it out if if you think this may put you off or if you want to find out better what is the exposed path because I, I took a video of it of all of it and so this is the path in my video, you can see how narrow that is. Remember always to check at the very bottom your um, root profile or elevation profile. The falls of Glomar are down here. This is the gorge. There is an alternative path for people that are afraid, that get scared. If that happens to you, I explain what you can do in my video. If you don't want to follow my advice in the video, remember that there is an alternative route, so you don't have to go through this if you're afraid. This is once you are over the waterfalls. There's this very nice, a nice track. So the route will go over here, all very straightforward. Like no big deal you will have to turn right so don't just zone out and keep going because you'll miss this and you'll hate your life for as long as it takes you to walk back then yeah just go over here no big deal you just fall in a path all the time and it's easy there's nothing special about the path you go through a bit of a forest section and then you start climbing up as you can see this this already up or this and further up and going up and going up at some point you start going down a little bit and then you just get to the falls of Gloma. that's a bit of a path if you want to get closer to the waterfall and otherwise you have to go left before this path there's this famous sign that is a must a picture must and so you just keep going here at some point you just go sort of down there's this river here and i remember the first time we did it i struggled here like what is the path finally we figured it out at some point when we saw the scrambling part especially from the distance we were like oh my god like, we must have taken the wrong path it gets better when you get closer to the place the path going down is annoying because both times i did it it was pretty slippery and muddy and boggy as you go down all this is one of my favorite places to I find it very beautiful, this valley, this mountain over here, there's a lot of deer and sheep here, and you can camp, all this is very beautiful. I never took this path, so I cannot tell you what's going on here. Unless you need to resupply, I think I would go this way. So just go this way, nice and easy track, you can even see it here in the map. Beautiful, nice place. This is what I was talking about. Yeah, so officially you go right, but you can go left if you head to Strathcarron. You just go left. I'm gonna zoom in so you see the path. This is the Harvey maps, by the way. So you have an alternate that's, that's nice to have, and you can see. This is this log up here. This is this log. As you walk on the road on the left, like a garage, on the right, a house. It's just, you can't miss that. It's pretty straightforward. And the road ends, and there is a fence. You take that fence, follow the path, and it takes you to this path. And then you just follow. Then you can come here. Just don't despair, if you don't see it, it will be 100% evident you will get to see where you can camp, which is here, trust me. I just keep going up. You get to this sort of forest that looks awful with all this forest work. 
and then in our case we went left so you can see there's a lot of alternatives you can do alternates but here we went left and then it takes you to this Stratcaron and this is Atadel Gardens so if you go left as you can see you don't have to pay otherwise if you want to see it you can pay and go through and just keep walking up the road and you make it to Strathcarron. And then you have one alternate that just go, I'll give you an overview. So you have one that goes up here. You have another that goes like this. You have another, well, this is the one I created myself that just go up here. And so over here, you can go this way, you can go this way. As you can see, you have different alternates. So what I did is just go from here all the way like this. And then somewhere here, there's a station. And let's say that it's sort of this to this station. Yes, walk here because it's marked here as an alternate. And so you just go all the way up there. I think in the Scottish National Trail you had some boots here showing you the difficulty. Yeah, this this one I mean see you have boots here as an indication, whereas in the Kebrath Trail they don't have these boots here to tell you the difficulty. So I never understood why this Craig to Kinlo Q uh, section is given four boots that is supposed to be four boots is already pretty difficult and, and this is like super tough it's just super straightforward it, perhaps the description was made before this these paths were here because this couldn't be easier i just cruised through the thing i walked so fast that i was amazed at how quickly i walked the whole thing so i'm walking too fast but what can i do man look, look at this what do i do here i cruise through I mean, the moment you are used to these box and river paths, when you get a track like this, you're like a Ferrari on a track. And this is where I am. I'm at the top of the second mountain pass uh, from Craig to Kilo Q. And why this section is giving four boots is really a mystery to me. I will give it two boots. Look, this is like two cars can fit here from beginning to end. As you come up here, you get here, check it out. So here again, you can go left or right. I went right, easy, as you can see. Um, of course, now that I've done it twice, I want to test. I mean, I want to see um, this area, for example. I met somebody, I don't remember if it was when doing it with my wife or on my own, who had done, who had done this and he said it wasn't so bad as described in the guide, but you know, it's someone else's opinion. And so we always took this way, it's very easy, it's just a road to kill a few. Here this is no longer a problem because I remember at some point it was pretty straightforward that you just get to the road and so you avoid this mess. In the guide they tell you that this is a mess but they, I think if memory serves they also tell you that you have the opportunity to pick up a, a forest track that takes you to the road and that is the case and you will just go down and at some point you see it it's very straightforward. And just be careful with the cars because believe it or not there's quite a bit of traffic at least the times I've been here and the cars drive by pretty fast. Anyway, so you get to Kilo Q, if you go left, there's two things to know here. You go left, you go to the gas station, and the women at the gas station was super nice to me. That is the Kilo Q Visitor Center. So you have to walk a bit, maybe 20 minutes, 15, you just follow this path. In the Visitor Center, you can camp there This is like a recreational area. There's some people living there, obviously. And I was told I could camp here. There's some toilets just there. 
and some people with the RVs. And there's this woman from this Kilochui hostel hotel. She says she's protecting the people in front in the house uh, from me. You know what, I'm going to move because I'm a good person. Maybe I'm stupid. Um, maybe she, she doesn't want people to come here because it's not good for the business. I will never know. That's what it is. So now, uh, just ready. Now I have to go. Well, I go because I want to. Because uh, I'm a good person. Stupid, I guess. I had to wait for the morning. That's why, by the way, that's why I didn't keep going. I had to... to um, take a resupplying package. That's why I had the nasty experience at the post office. This is a very nice stage. I find it very nice because you go up a mountain way up and even though the I checked the elevation profile and it's not much, but it really doesn't seem to be like this. To me, it would be more like a thousand. The day starts very well, and you think to yourself, why would people say this is a tough stage? Look at this, it's fantastic. If you get to Shenabal Bothy, you'll arrive this way, and then come up here. Don't forget two things. One, if you go this way, there's beautiful views over here. It's just because I went up here, just a little bit up, just a bit. You will see uh, just uh, like six meters up, then you have very beautiful views over there. The second point is, it may be a bit disorientated because you came this way and you may think that you just have to keep going this way where I just told you to go and, and take a look at the views. That's wrong. You get out the Bothy and you come this way and from literally almost the first step you take all the way up and this is like very steep up in this direction. Sorry, I'm just catching up with my breath. Coming from... I don't think you'll see it, but it's all the freaking way down to this valley. All the way up, it's pretty steep. The things start very easy. I remember crossing this bridge, I did a vlog. All right, we are on day 22nd, and I'm on my way to Shenabal. I'm at Kilo Q. Uh, the weather sucks. Go this way. Very nice track all the way. You just cruising through all this, even if it's pouring down on you, no problems, cruising through. And then probably over here somewhere, you start going up. At some point, as always happens, the very nice track disappears. And then at least here, you're lucky, you still have a track. When you get to this, this point, this is very nice. I personally felt this was a very special area. You get to the edge here, you still follow a path, it's distinct, it's a small and whatever, but it's distinct and you can follow it all the way to the top. Again, the path is gone and then you're in a pathless section. Here's where you can connect to a little path, like really bad and all, but it's a path and it's so much better and you'll love it. And so I was on my own, cross all this on my own, came here, very beautiful, very special area here. You can camp over here as well, but you're going to feel your camping on the middle of nowhere, but it's so special and nice. I was a bit worried about the river crossing that I had to do, a couple of them, somewhere over there, I think, I don't remember. And then at the end of this here, for sure. But then it turned out to be easy peasy, like I didn't have to worry about it at all. And then when you get here, you can choose to go up the mountain here, like literally, there's a mountain here, you need to go up. In the harbor maps, you can also see that you need to go right and then straight up. This little bit here, that seems like nothing, especially this bit here. You go up the hill, it's very steep. This is a nice track. So you just cruise through here. If you go this way, you will suffer, especially if there's a bad day and it's all muddy and boggy and whatnot. And over here, the navigation is not so straightforward. There are two paths here. I mean, there is mark only one, but actually there were two that I could see and follow. And it's not very clear which one to follow. There are canes throughout the way. All over here, I always saw canes. So I uh, followed the one with the canes. You really earn going to this bothy 
In summer is different. In summer meaning if everything is dry, because you know the summer is cotton. Easy way, continue this way. That's the easy way. Just pick up this and don't look back. This really doesn't describe the suffering you'll go through if you have a bad day to see the bothy and the beautiful terrain. Uh, if you want to see channel about Google and watch the pictures, watch my SNT video or whatever, because I lost a memory card with my wife. And by the way, there's something like a house that looks like a bothy before the bothy, and that's not. Over here, there's also camping spots. They seem to be easy, short of 19k, easy peasy, right? Yeah, I go like this, I would delete it. That's it. It was all good un until this, until the comma. Let's look at the elevation profile. Feels more like um, 600 and 800. In summertime, you can get the path to look like this. While doing the Scottish National Trail, this is not like the path I got. It's following the fantastic path as described by Walk Highlands of Cotto, UK. It's an amazing path. It just that sucks. All the fucking way. It's fucking boggy. It's a fucking swamp. It's not a fucking good path. My it sucks big time. Change the fucking description. So basically, there are two stages. The first sort of going over the mountain and the second. So this is after you go over the first uh, mountain thing, which is where I saw this Land Rover with the ladies. We left it here in the Chernobyl Bothy. So as you exit the Bothy, first thing you do is just go all the freaking way, pretty steep, up the hill. More or less you can follow the path. It's not very straightforward, but if you've been in Scotland before and all, you know, you develop an eye. If not, good luck to you. Hey guys, just real quick. If you're finding this guide helpful, please give me a thumbs up so that I know you are enjoying it. All this part over here, like near the top here, and all this thing, it feels um, you're in the middle of nowhere. The real story of this is by no means what the map is telling you. Again, that you just come here, and, oh, I can just go to a both feet, check it out and come back and pick up the track. It really isn't like that, trust me. And then yes, uh, I was very happy to finally pick up the normal route, so to say. Just keep going, all this for sure. Was pretty straightforward, easy track. And then, yeah, remember, I just take this and you are on a road. There's a parking slot here, but nothing there, just a parking. So you just cross here and there's a fence here. And I remember, I think I kept going a bit forward. One of the very few times that I didn't uh, follow the right path because I was making a video of the door here and whatnot. And I think I just kept going without thinking, oh, is this the right track? Because I was making this video. So anyway, I just pick up the track again. I knew where to go. Once I pick it up, I got some memories, Woo. took it, all fine. And things to say here. There is a path you can follow and you can walk on the path. At times you struggle, what's the path was not, but you find it for the most part is easy. It just, um, I find this, this stage is, is more tiring than it shows. Here, Chernobyl to Inverlale, only three woods. See what I mean? And to me, this is certainly a four wood stage. There's no way this is a three woods. And then the only thing to say over here, you start going down here, quite steep, no big deal. Just watch out for your toes and whatnot. So once you are in this, the normal route would be this, Inverlale to Oikel Bridge. Probably is prettier when it comes to nature and all, but if you had enough of nature by the time you get to Inverlale, head to Ullapool. This is Inverlale here somewhere. So this is where I arrange for a taxi. It takes you all the way up to Ullapool. I'll show you now. So this is the path some people choose to take. So this is the overview. And basically, if you go to Ullapool here, you will connect to this path over here. So, if you're in Inverlale, you can take this path. Just pause the video to see it. And as you can see, this is a pathless section where the little dots are. So, this is probably beautiful and rough and way more difficult. Uh, getting a taxi in Inverlale, I think it's around 8k. Takes you to Ullapool, you get your fish and chips, 
you see Ulapurga, if you've never been there, it's nice. And just avoid the pubs in the main street and head straight to the fish and chip shop. There are two of them at least, just head for those and save your money and get some good food instead. All this is a paved road that cars can go through. So at some point, cars aren't allowed to continue on this road unless they have a special permission. So in general, there's very, very little traffic here. So it's very safe uh, to walk it. So you get to this log, super easy, very good path. After the log, as you can see here, the difference between this solid red line, which is a road, and this, that is more like a track. This is where the other route connects. Over here, you come in this way, if you come from Ulapur, just continue. And just pick up the normal line of route. You have your bothy at the end of the log. The bothy is here, not done. And also you can see it here. It's an overview. So you would just keep going, as you can see, it's a nice track, it's marked on the Harvey maps. And this is the school bothy, very good path, as you can see, it's a nice track. And you make it all the way to Otter Bridge, just right there, with very good tracks. There is an alternative route both times with my wife and while on my own doing the SNT, I did this alternate because I wanted to be back in one of the mountain passes. I find it really fascinating, very nice the place. If you go to the Scottish National Trail, you'll get the grade. I don't know why they don't give you the grade here, but so this would be uh, Oakel Bridge to Inchnadamth. So we go to the Scottish National Trail. Oracle Bridge to Inchnadamth. Here you have it. So you have four boots. So you know what to expect. So we're on Oracle Bridge. Don't continue as you go along. Don't continue this way. There's Oracle Bridge. You need to come here. You need to cross the bridge. Here, there is a manager of the Oracle Bridge Hotel. She's also top class. She's a really nice. She likes hiking herself and she's like fantastic as well. Up here, I remember there's a bend. I camped there. And so just go here and um, start to be easy peasy. But then once you get closer to the river, the path becomes worse and worse, especially if the mages are attacking you, then you're gonna have a hell of a time. But other than that, you just keep cruising through. This was a, certainly a better path. Like a, a thing you can drive here, actually. You get to the more lodge. It's all pretty straightforward, easy here. Somewhere on the left, probably here, you can camp. Otherwise, over here, somewhere on the right, somewhere over here, you can camp too. It's a easy to walk path, no big deal. Here in this place, there's an alternate. Both times, I took the left. While doing the SNT, I camped right here, in between of these two rivers, right there. Here we are. Day 26, river, river, mountains. You can't see them, but they're there. The first time my wife and I struggle a lot more here. The second time I manage for the most part to stay on the path. See this path? More or less you get an idea. There's another path down here, all right? They go parallel and they're very close. Oh, you can't see it there, unfortunately. This is the one you want. Don't take the double path, the, like sort of the track, like for a tractor. Head a little bit to the right of that track. And which would be, head a little bit northeast. You will find the single path you want. Down there, super boggy and messy. It's still a path and everything. Here is better. So just remember that. The first time when I did my, with my wife, I thought there was no path. And I just tried, you know, we tried the best we could. The second time I did it, as hard as I tried, I still missed the path countless times. It's just that I also went back on track 
countless times. So all in all, I would say more or less follow the GPS. You just need to walk on the side of the mountain, not too low, not too high, just the side. That's the path here. Over here is the other sort of double path. This is better. It's not amazing, it gets boggy, but it's better than the other one. You follow in the path and then by inertia, you will just want to continue following the path. Wrong. Just be on top of your navigation. You're not going here, anywhere here. You're going this way. This is a very emotional moment for me because I was here with my wife and we were struggling to find what to what to cross and where the mountain pass was. Turns out is this this peak over there on the other side. You can see it from as you approach. And now this is also important. There is a path here. This one goes up, and that's a log on the other side. If you want to go left here, there's a path clearly there. You, you will see it. But you need to pay attention and then you go i think it's northwest um over there and you'll see it this is whitish part this is all the valley you've been walking here on the mountain side it will be weird because you know you have to go this way and then you turn it sort of right a bit so it's a bit weird but just stick to that because what you're doing is staying more or less at the same altitude so that then you can cross over here at the same altitude so you don't lose your altitude and then you just keep coming and then you have to here you have to go up climb up then you just go around and then you continue going up again you will see that it, be, it start becoming steeper that should be your landmark and sign you just oh i'm going steep i'm going up i better check my map now because i'm heading the wrong direction here you cross the waterfall when i did it with my wife it was easy peasy when I do a S T. So we are at this uh, waterfall. We have to cross now and head to the other mountain. Crossing that waterfall wasn't easy. Super slippery. I cross it like a freaking dog. You make a mistake. You're going down. It was incredibly slippery and then you need to go like kind of to the other hill you will see what i mean once you get over here somewhere you will you will see a path there's big rocks and like one or two square meters rocks and so you just go up and you will follow a path it's very straightforward so this area is all very beautiful very special all this here and when i did the snt there were so many deers all the time and here the, you could hear them and there was echo and it was very very special to hear the sound of the deer with the echo and then at some point over here i think it's here you turn right and then you get to see the this log or whatever this is yeah it's a log you get to see it and so you go up and then sort of down and you, but you turn right and you have the views of the log and it's very beautiful and then you just go down and trust me all this thing even though the path is in the best but it's okay it's, especially if you have a good day it's very beautiful even this river going down and it has beautiful views the whole thing very nice so then the first time we skip 50 kilometers of trail so we didn't have to camp any more nights and then we avoided the midges. Now, when I did the s &T, the reason why I didn't walk to this and I skipped again this time 40 kilometers because I had to walk 10 is because my wife read this uh, stage while I was doing the s &T. Somewhere in between on this section, there is a river crossing and my wife was concerned. I had told her, you know, I had a very close call while crossing a river in the Cairngorms. Not only one, three rivers top right dangerous. So when she read this thing and she did want me to cross more rivers i said okay don't worry about it i won't do that thing i promise her and i just keep that so unfortunately i cannot tell you anything about these last two stages i reconnect to sandwood bay and sandwood bay to cape Wrath. you can do this in one day easily in reconnect 
that is a place you can stay. You can come somewhere over there by this. Somewhere over here, there is a shop called London Stores. The guy is nice and you can count on him. You can ship your parcel there and he will let you down. And for the most part, he's always open. Just give him a call to check your dates. There's two things to know. One, when you get here, you can just walk down here. There is a shop, it's a fish and chips shop and boy, one of the best fish and chips I've ever had in my freaking life here. Right next to the shop, the fish and chip shop, there is a supermarket. The bed and breakfast I stayed in twice, which is somewhere over here. I will put the name on the screen. So this stage only takes you to Sandwood Bay, but you can certainly do it in one go. My wife and I did it in one go, while well, doing s and I did it in one go. Depending on the time of the year you do the Keprath Trail, what makes Sandwood Bay special, that is in a remote place in Scotland, if you think about it, it, it won't be so special. Because when you get there, and there's so many weekend campers, I don't mean any disrespect. All I mean to say is that it, it's just full of people. It, it seems like a touristic spot here in London. To me, it killed the atmosphere, what makes the thing special. When I did the SNT, I didn't see a soul. Now, the only thing to say here is you follow your path into Sunwood Bay, it's pretty straightforward. Now, how you exit Sunwood Bay to head to the Cape Wrath? When you walk by alongside the beach, there is a point here that you can clearly see the beach ends basically and you can keep going this way but you, you will see this mountain coming into the beach that is for sure your landmark you know you need to climb up this mountain if you look from this side you will see the path on the mountain you see it and uh, when you are going down here you check your gps and you try to stick exactly to the gps path why because the gps will take you to the place in the fence where you can cross it the easiest way. The same was true for another point, you have to cross the river. So where the GPS takes you, it's easier for you to cross and climb up. And that's why you should stick to the GPS exactly. If you come here, you have the very beautiful and worth, um, totally worth it views. So I recommend you getting here. Once you see the views, you can literally cross straight ahead all the way like this. Have a straight line so you walk less if you want to walk less, you know. And both times this area tends to be very beautiful, or at least to me. Then you just go down here, and then, believe it or not, you can uh, connect to this track. There is a vehicle's track. So, even if you are in disbelief, um, yes, you eventually pick up the track. The path, we connected to the path. This is the last bit of all this suffering. And then there's just an easy sort of 1.5 kilometers to the Cape Wrath. And you just follow a track. It's nice and easy. There is a um, Cape Wrath Trail accommodation. So yes, you can stay at the Cape Wrath. It's very nice, especially in COVID times, because if nobody has booked the thing before you and you can book in, in advance, then you and your group will have the entire accommodation for yourself. To exit the Cape Wrath, the first time with my wife, we had to walk all the freaking way somewhere. So we walked all this, 18K, I think it was. So you pick up the ferry. Just make sure with Angie here that the ferry is going. The ferry crosses you here, this part. I know because once you cross the ferry, you're still not done with it. You need to walk all the way to Darnes. So it's a pain in the ass. You can pay for a service the, with Angie and she drives you all the way to the ferry. In Darnes, you need to make sure there is a bus running. It only runs, I think, at certain times of the day, early morning around seven or so, I don't remember. With COVID thing, if you don't book in advance, you cannot take the bus. If memory serves, you take the minibus to Lairg, Lairg train station. And from Lairg, you take a train to Inverness and then you fly somewhere. Good luck. Well, this is it guys. I hope you found the video helpful and hopefully you'll have a fantastic time while doing the Cape Wrath Trail. It truly is a really, really nice route. If you have any questions, just write them down in the comment section down below. I always get back to people. I hope to see you on the trails. Bye. There it is. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, here we are. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We made it.
made it. <laughs>